Welcome back to Survival Pulse. Today, I'm going to present a 2011 American military science fiction action film called Battle Los Angeles. Spoilers ahead, sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. The movie begins with a series of news reports spreading worldwide about an unprecedented meteor shower off the coast of Tokyo, an unknown enemy reaches the coastline using military-like tactics. Los Angeles is being evacuated, while chaos ensues across the globe. The events unfold on the 12th of August, 2011, taking a step back to months before the incident. Soldiers are training for their defense along the California coastline. Staff Sergeant Michael Nance is among them, and his men warmly greet him. He is driving to the Marine base while listening to the news and contemplating his resignation. Despite the meteor warning, his men continue with their lives, some party, one preparing for marriage, and so on, as the meteors start hitting California. The Marine soldiers leave their training base for mobilization. The staff sergeant's resignation is put on hold as the situation worsens, and he is assigned to Lieutenant Martinez's platoon, a decision that worries him. The military deploys and prepares to defend Los Angeles as Santa Monica is under threat by the coast. They realize that the meteor-like objects share the same shapes, concluding that it's a terrorist attack and declaring a localized warning. As the coastal areas continue to be bombarded, a reporter spots a few creatures moving along the coast, which appear far from human. The Marines move from their base in California to defend Los Angeles, Lieutenant Martinez introduces Staff Sergeant to his men, and as they head toward the coast, the soldiers poke fun at the new sergeant. Others find solace in reading the Bible, and the lieutenant writes a letter to his wife. They arrive at Santa Monica Airport and proceed to their base while discussing their defense strategy. They rescue civilians and clear the area, searching for more people to assist. As they move through the smoke caused by the meteors, the road becomes eerie, and they encounter a dog. Shortly after, intense bomb attacks create panic. They are pursued by extraterrestrial creatures and struggle to find an escape. One soldier discovers an exit, leading them into a house, where they tend to the wounded soldiers from the major attack. While escaping, one of Lieutenant's men, Lenihan, becomes separated and goes missing. He communicates his location through the radio but the team can't pinpoint his exact position as he turns his radio off to avoid the enemy. Lenihan faces the creature one-on-one, -on -one, engaging in a shootout. The creature falls into a pool, and Lenihan continues to fire relentlessly. The team eventually locates him, but the enemy retaliates, shooting them all. They confront the enigmatic enemy. Unsure of what it is, Lenihan notes that the creature doesn't die despite multiple shots. They decide to throw a bomb into the pool to ensure its demise, as they head to the police station. One of their men is hit by a large bomb, suffering severe thermal burns on his face and neck. While guarding the station, they spot moving figures, but Staff Sergeant Nance prevents them from opening fire. These friendlies turn out to be the only surviving soldiers from their team, part of their force. Alongside their force, the Marines are currently heading toward the police station while assisting the injured. Two individuals are exploring the station when they suddenly hear a noise, prompting them to turn off their radios to avoid detection by the creature. They identify themselves as U.S. Marines and discover civilians in need of help. Two adults and three children, a total of five individuals, shortly after. A medical team arrives to airlift the wounded Marines, leaving no space for the civilians. Tragically, the helicopter is hit by a bomb resulting in its destruction and the loss of those on board. Amid the chaos, they spot numerous creatures circling the downed aircraft. Revealing the extraterrestrials' air capabilities, the Marines urgently call for assistance. Corporal Kevin Harris is in shock over the loss of some of his comrades, but his team members motivate him to regain his composure. The lieutenant is also overwhelmed by the loss of four of his men and is unable to make decisions. The staff sergeant helps him stay calm and focused, with the helicopter out of the question due to enemy fire. They plan to reach the forward operating base via the safest route. Observing the creatures, they notice lookout and leadership roles among them. They learn from the news that the creatures are likely targeting Earth's water. Given the planet's abundant supply, to lookout men spot a bus that might be operational. While they search for an escape route, they encounter a wounded and seemingly weaponized alien. The sergeant refrains from firing to conserve ammunition and find the best way to kill the creature. 
A civilian with veterinary skills offers her assistance. Meanwhile, the two men operating the bus are preparing it for use. Valians approach the north entrance of the station, leaving the lieutenant and civilians to escape through the south entrance while the bus rescues. The remaining team members, the bus, with Imlay as a lookout, attacks the aliens with a bomb. The tech and sergeant continue to struggle to find the creature's weak point. When they eventually take their last shot, they succeed in killing it, another alien approaches, and Imlay throws another bomb as the two sergeants exit the station. They board the bus and fend off approaching creatures, covering Furia with gunfire. While on the bus, they realize they are approximately six miles from the forward operating base, estimating a 25 to 30 minute journey. Their force is expected to clear the area in about 40 minutes, so they must move quickly. During their smooth ride, they suddenly hear strange noises overhead. The staff sergeant orders the bus to stop, and they witness hundreds of creatures flying in a circle formation over downtown Los Angeles. They turn off all radios and electronic devices to avoid detection. SKT, Mike exits the bus while the team keeps an eye on the approaching enemy. He places a turned-on radio in a gasoline station and throws a bomb at the approaching creatures. Worried team members witness the explosion but see SKT, Mike safely returning to the bus. They realize that the creature's aircraft is unmanned, similar to a flying drone. They celebrate the staff sergeant's heroic act a few more minutes while driving. They are now two and a half miles away from the FOB but the drone-like creature attacks them. Instantly, the lieutenant is now surpassing the fire while the staff sergeant is protecting the civilians. The team is taking defense while the kids are getting down from the bridge with the help of a rope. The battle becomes chaos. Aliens are everywhere. Soldiers are getting shot and falling from the bridge. Not long after, another new thing comes up. Bigger than aliens, they shoot the car west of Ruiz. They lose another man from their team. A soldier is hit again while they are trying to mend the wound. Valian is coming to them. The civilian has no choice but to pull a trigger. But he gets a bullet as well. The lieutenant is now wounded behind the bus. However, the staff sergeant cannot leave him alone. They are now arguing because they need to get the team and the civilians off the place. The lieutenant orders him to get everyone from the freeway and leaves him a letter for his wife. He still has bags of bombs on the bus and proceeds to throw them on the aliens in front of him, making him ash as well, having an order from the now dead lieutenant. The staff sergeant carries and continues to do his job. The men are getting suspicious of him without knowing the real reason why, following the orders. They now escape from the bombing area and come to a store, getting medicines and first aid kits. The shot civilian is getting treated with his son, not leaving him alone. The staff sergeant is now talking with the civilian, motivating him that he did his best. The civilian asked him to promise to take care of his son but got interrupted for an urgent, hardwired connection. They are now listening to the news stating that the ocean levels are decreasing. The creatures are using the water to power themselves as well as making it their fuel. Moreover, they find that the extraterrestrials have a command and control center. They need to put it to an end minutes later. Their force is now about to bomb the control center. They count to 10 seconds, but nothing happened, leaving them dumbfounded. They check the Santa Monica airport that is now burning into ashes. The supposed bombs didn't drop because the operating base is now wiped out. As they are staring at the map, looking for a non-wiped out place, one of their men goes to him and states that Mr. Rinkin, the hero civilian, is dead. He goes up to anger as he loses one more person. There. He sees the son crying to his breathless dad. The staff sergeant checks out the child and he hurriedly hugs him as the son cries for his loss. The sergeant empathizes and gives him motivational words, stating that he is his little marine. Not long after, the sergeant decides to move, ordering the men that they cannot lose another civilian. One of the soldiers comes up to him out of respect. He apparently lost his brother with the sergeant as the leader. Some of the soldiers still think that he got his men killed. But he defended himself and says he would rather trade place with them. He states that he never forgets his men and eagerly recites the dead soldiers' names with their United States military social security numbers. He then tells them that to honor those who passed away, they must keep on going and never quit. A few minutes more, they now get prepared for defense and to get out of the place. The creatures are forming defense and it will take a long time to go to the nearest evacuation site, but they still need to move.
The soldiers led the civilians to a light armored vehicle and now requesting help using their radio. It is now two minutes until the helicopter drops and the staff sergeant checks the civilians if they are still all right few rides more. A handful of aliens are on their way and they decide to speed up the vehicle. The sergeant is now on a one against many battle with the creatures. He manages to down those aliens like bowling pins. They are now in the air as the helicopter comes for them, but not long after. The aircraft begins to on and off like someone is playing on their power. That leads to the sergeant that they are near to the extraterrestrials command and control center. He needs to land but the helicopter cannot because it may not have the power to take off again. As he thinks of what to do, he gives the lieutenant's letter to his wife to the civilian. After he assigns him lay to be the commander, the sergeant lands on the nearest roof with the help of a rope. The soldiers follow him for the looking of the command center and the technical sergeant answers that what they're looking for could be in the basement. They then hurriedly look for it, walking through a dim hallway and canals, not long after. An alien finds them and so another battle begins. When it died, they hastily go up to the rooftop and see the center. They are now planning behind strong rocks, assigning which and which shall defend, while one soldier is calling for help. They separate in every corner and they are now painting the target with a laser, however. The creature's drone bombs the place where Kearns is hiding, thus making him ashes. They continue to fight and bomb the aliens while waiting for rescue, unfortunately. Amlay gets stuck against the rocks and the staff sergeant direct hits the big armor making the soldiers celebrate. As they are thinking it over, the center strikes up through. Leaving them in shock, the drones are pulling them away but still. The sergeant focuses on painting the target with the laser. The creatures are using the drone to protect the ship while Imlay finally gets out from the huge piles of rock with the help of his member a few more bullets later. The ship is getting out of rage they need to take it down. Tech Sergeant Santosh shoots the last drone flying while the Staff Sergeant teams up with the laser. It creates a big bomb through the whole command and control center that aliens manually shoot them and likewise. The soldiers shoot as well finally. The helicopter rescues them and they land on a temporary operating base where they rest for a while. The soldiers departed doing an outstanding heroic job taking down the ship and rescuing civilians. After a while, the first sergeant is telling them to rest and eat. The movie ends with the soldiers rearming and joining a force to retake Los Angeles.